Hey folks, welcome back to Remy Moto. Today we're doing a Reacts video. I'm gonna watch Greg from Moto Jitsu go over his top five beginner stuff. Uh, I actually don't remember if this was beginner mistakes or beginner suggestions or what. I think it was mistakes. And my reaction to it, because why not? Well, let's do it. If you are not familiar, Moto Jitsu is a good channel if you are a beginning rider or just looking to improve. Uh, small doses. He, he's kind of repetitive on a lot of stuff, but it's So this basics. video is about the top five mistakes beginner motorcycle riders make. Oop. And before I even start, I just wanted to say... Let's, let's fix this. Uh, let's put me over here. We'll cover up Greg's book. Not advertising for him, right? <laughs> he has several books. He's got a, an app, a phone app for you to practice routines. Uh, a lot of low speed drills because, well, we'll get into that, but. Hey, this was me. Every single one of these things I have done. So a lot of the time, the reasons I make the videos that I do is to try to help people not make the mistakes I made. And that's what wisdom really is learning from someone else's mistakes, right? So these are my top five. I definitely agree. Learning from other people's mistakes, other people's knowledge is just smart. Uh, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Why repeat errors that somebody else already made? If you can avoid making the same mistakes over and over, you're ahead of the game. So the first thing, not purchasing full gear, right? You see people wearing like what I did when I first bought a motorcycle, I bought a helmet. I didn't know anything about DOT, ECE, certifications, brand, color, design, fit. I didn't really know much of anything. I had no one to help me out. I just kind of, okay, this looks like a good helmet and I just bought it. Um, I bought a jacket and gloves and that was it. I didn't have any type of riding pants. I didn't have any boots on. I was just wearing tennis shoes and jeans. A lot of beginner riders do this because either just ignorance, just not sure, or they don't think like, well, I'm only gonna be going, I'm brand new, I'm not gonna be riding with full gear all the time because that's not what I see most people do. Most people just ride around in jeans. So put on all the gear that you have, right? And imagine jumping out of a car at 65 miles per hour. If you're not willing to accept the consequences of you crashing and tumbling and sliding down the pavement with the gear that you're wearing, well, obviously not, it's not good enough because a motorcycle crash is gonna be very violent. At a minimum, I would highly recommend Full face helmet, motorcycle gloves, jacket, pants, and motorcycle boots that actually go up to like maybe mid shin or something like that that are very strong. And no matter what, good quality thick armor in the elbows, shoulders, back, hips, and knees. Um, because think about what's gonna hit the ground if you start tumbling down the cement, right? You wanna be protected. So purchasing full quality gear. I agree in the sense that proper PPE is critical. If you are not wearing the right equipment, when things go wrong, you will get more hurt. But obviously, you have to juggle reality with what you would like. I kind of come at it the same way he does of, what are you doing? Are you willing to accept the consequences in the gear you're wearing? And I, I really think that helmet, gloves, boots, jacket. And the jacket, you have to be realistic. Like, it's 85 degrees out today. I went riding in my mesh jacket with a long sleeve shirt on underneath it. That was as warm as I was gonna go. I would have swapped out for a, a short sleeve shirt or a base layer style shirt, you know, wicking shirt, if it got any hotter. And it's going to. This is, this is South Texas. I live outside of San Antonio, Texas. So I have to be realistic about how much gear I'm actually going to wear. I think that's the key. It's not about how much gear should you wear. It's what will you wear? Number two, not practicing the things that you learned in the basic course. So whatever state you're in or wherever you're at, whatever the basic course is, no matter how long it is, it's still just the basics. I usually describe the basic course as like an eighth grade education in motorcycle riding. You have to go take higher level courses to get your bachelor's and master's and PhD and et cetera, et cetera. But whatever you learned in the basic course, right? They give you a bike, it's usually a small CC bike. Then you go and buy your own bike. Once you get your own motorcycle, practice what you were taught in the two days at the course in the same environment. 
You could go back to the exact same spot if it's just like a public parking lot that they use just to do classes on the weekends or whatnot, or go find yourself your own parking lot. Do swerving, do emergency braking, low speed maneuvers to get comfortable with your bike. And that doesn't stop. I mean, I practice myself two to three times a week. Okay, we're gonna fast forward after I comment. 100% agree. I absolutely, unequivocally, 100% agree. All the times that I have thought that would have been bad on a heavier bike because I've, I've always been able to easily save it on my lightweight bike. Just put a foot down. If you're, if you're going slow and you're about to fall over, which has been every time I was about to fall over, <clears throat> my bike does not weigh enough for that to be particularly hard to save. But every time that has come up, it has been something that directly translates to what the course taught us, what we practiced in the course at the Harley dealer. Every single time. Basic lessons that they taught us apply every time you ride, whether you're pulling out from your parking spot, pulling into your parking spot, making a 90 degree corner at an intersection, you know, dealing with traffic in the street, you know, where you're, you're just sitting in stop and go traffic, you're pulling in at a restaurant, uh, a bar, or a, a grocery store. Over and over and over, those same skills apply. Practice it, because doing it day to day is not practice. Emergency braking, swerving, low practice. Yeah. Minimum a couple times a week, I highly recommend. Number three, uh, the first thing, just like what I did, my first, first bike I bought was a Seabear 1000. And by comparison, that's like buying a Lamborghini as a 16 year old. It doesn't make too much sense, right? So going too big of a bike too soon. And I think it would be very beneficial if people bought like a 500cc bike or less for like the first year. So they could have a bike to actually learn the techniques that's more forgiving, it's lighter weight and less power than a big, huge, powerful bike, right? And another big problem that people have, same thing I did, I bought the CBR 1000 because the people I was hanging out with, they were making fun of me and they were encouraging me to do that. You want to be one of the guys, bro. Don't get a 600. You're going to be bored with the 600. Don't get that. You're going to want a thousand after a couple months. I looked up to these people. They're way better than riders than me. They've been riding for 10 years. I've been riding two weeks. So what do I know? So I'm like, okay, I guess I'll get that bike. Little did I know, right? If I could go back, then there's no way I would have bought that bike. So going too big, too quickly. And a lot of the times, let's say you buy an R3. You're like, oh man, I want to be faster. So I'm going to get an R6. Well, the bike has nothing to do with it. If you could take a corner at 20 miles per hour on the R3, by having an R6 doesn't mean you could automatically go double the speed to the corner because your skills will allow your, certain, your, your speed. Everybody has a skill speed limit. So probably went too long for YouTube to be happy with this, but again, I mostly agree. Uh, I think that obviously you can't compare different categories of bikes because if you're talking, you bought a cruiser you bought a harley davidson well it's probably going to be at least 883 cc's right i mean if you bought a, a basic sportster it's an 883 unless you bought something really old all the way through they're big stuff but i do think buying the big harleys is stupid for your first bike because you're not ready for it it's not the power, it's the weight. If you make a small mistake, it will punish you. This is different from what happens if you buy, say, a 600cc Super Sport, where it's not the weight of the bike. The bike might only weigh 50 pounds more than mine. But if you hold that throttle open a little too long and get into the actual power band, you suddenly have a rocket ship. And if you're not ready, you can get yourself in trouble real quick. Your brakes are going to be extremely powerful. If you're not ready for that, if you if you grab a fistful front brake, you're not on the bike anymore. You're you're airborne. Uh, you know you've you've lost the front end. So we're gonna keep going. As well, have it on an R3 where it's less forgiving with the throttle and not so much power and lighter weight taking that corner in 50 than an R. I, I will just say, I don't think that. I, actually, I, let me rephrase. I think his analogy with R3 is extremely good because the R3 throttle, you have to crank on to get full throttle. Like you don't accidentally get the full throttle from zero. Your wrist doesn't turn that far. My bike, 
it's a real, I mean, you can easily go from zero to full throttle. It just doesn't do a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I, I get to full throttle all the time. Uh, it's one of the things I actually like about my bike is that I get to use pretty much all of the throttle and braking power on a daily basis if I choose to. Like, I don't have to break the law to do it. I don't have to be driving like a hooligan. I can just choose to do it. You you can make a mistake with the throttle. You can advance the throttle fast and not have the bike do anything crazy and get out from under you. Keep the power reasonable. Um, I, I really think he is 100% on, on the right track with this, which is not to say you have to buy a wussy bike. I, I have... You know, for my age, for my knowledge level, for my maturity level, eh, you know, I bought less bike than I could have. I did it for other reasons. But I'm just saying don't buy the 1,000cc sport bike. Don't buy the 600. Don't buy, you know, the 745 Triumph. Buy something that is more mild-mannered. Buy a 650. You know, if you're if you're my size and, and age and you're buying your first bike, a 650 upright of whatever style is pretty nice. It, you're going to not be hurting for power. You're not going to feel like it's not enough, but you're not going to touch the gas a little too much, touch that throttle a little too much and get in a lot of trouble real fast. Or one where it's quadrupled the horsepower and double the weight. You see what I'm saying? So if you think you want to be faster and be a better rider, forget about the bike, just upgrade yourself. It's always upgrading the software and forgetting about the hardware. The bike is fine. 100%, 100%, oh my God. So today was a great example and I'm, I'm, I might slip in some clips here. I took a road that I've done before <clears throat> and then I took a side road off of it. And the side road off of it, same kind of road. Same deal, and I was hoping that it was a better road. Because the problem is, every time you get to go around what should be a fun corner, the road is like rumble strips. It wasn't about could the bike go faster? Was it, you know, if I had more power? No, I was limited by the tra available traction on that road. Now, I'm not saying somebody with more experience and confidence can't go around that corner more aggressively. Haven't had it slide out from under me yet, right? It clearly can do more than I'm doing. But my confidence level, my skill level is 100% the limiting factor. Most people just aren't good enough to make the bike do what they want it to do. Right. Next thing, people go way, way too fast, way too quickly. Just like me. Again, all these mistakes I've made myself. So I'm not, like you look at the first picture of the first little thing. I had like the picture, like the emoji of the guy going like this, like, oh my gosh. So I don't walk around looking at people like, oh, look at this person, look at that person. That was me. I'm just trying to help people not make the mistakes I've made. So I bought the bike and automatically I was riding 40 miles one direction from San Diego up to Camp Pendleton and I was still enlisted in the Marines. And I was like, well, okay, well, I had to go back and forth to work. So immediately I jumped on the highway and started riding, <laughs> lane splitting and everything within days after buying the bike. It's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm very, very lucky um, I didn't get seriously hurt because I had, how I did not know how to control the bike, how much power it had, it was crazy. Again, why was I doing that? Well, I wanted to be like everybody else. I didn't want to feel like I was less of a rider, like I was scared and everybody else talking like, oh, you could just ride, just go slow, you'll be fine. So, We'll, we'll shortcut what he's talking about, and it's it's the whole rest of this section. He's talking about peer pressure. Don't don't give in to peer pressure. You are doing something that is inherently dangerous. 
whether it is this skydiving, skiing, caving, rock climbing, if you are doing something where the danger is the activity, right? Where, where if you screw up, it will kill you. Don't let your ego, don't let peer pressure get to you. Do it below your skill level. Advance your skill, learn, take classes, practice new skills in a safer environment until you, you've improved your skill and then keep doing that over and over. But you, you can lift what you do, you know, your skill level's up here, your activity level is here. But when your skill level is down here, keep your activity level down below that, okay? Don't do something you're not ready to do just because other people are doing it. All right, back up, there we go. Get right back off the exit, do that for a week, and then maybe two weeks, go two exits, and kind of work your way into um, greater and greater distances, not just too much. Number four, this is a whole lot of people. This is the basic crowd. This is a lot of people on motorcycles. They take the very basic course and then that's all they do. They don't take any further education at all. And they think that's all that, the basic course, that's all they need. Well, I got my license, so I must be good enough, right? Remember, it's like an eighth grade education. You're only good at riding in a parking lot 120. That's what the basic course means. So the basic way of riding, this is like a 15 lane highway and everybody's going down the same direction in a straight line on cruise control. Yeah, it's easy, but you're not. So, like I've said, I'm, I'm into firearms and I have a firearms education channel and I'm also into archery and a number of other hobbies, sports activities where anytime you think you know everything there is, somebody comes along and goes, you're an idiot, you know nothing. And they're right because in their niche, they know a thousand times more than you. You don't even know the tiniest little thing. And... That's, that's the key, right? Unless you are an absolute specialist and you only need to know how to do one thing, you need to keep learning. You need to keep branching out. Uh, and he, he spends the next 10 minutes talking about it. But it is all about taking more courses, even if it's online, even if it's just watching people like him. But there are a lot of people who post content about how to ride better. Uh, Canyon Chasers is a great example. Keep learning and then go practice it. Learn some more. Go practice it. Come back and rewatch the video. You'll pick up things you didn't pick up the first time. I video myself doing a lot of things. And then I look at the video and I go, damn, I thought I was doing that way better. I need to work on this, 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 and this. And I was, I was way off. And I do it again. And I keep practicing, keep practicing. You know, and I look at the video you know, a month later and I go, yeah, getting better, getting better. And I keep doing it. And if you don't do that, you're going to think you're good when you're horrible. And you're going to find out you're horrible when something goes wrong. So not doing that is a big, big mistake I see a lot of people do. The last one, number five, is not finding a really good mentor. And a mentor is someone that will be honest with you, honest with your riding ability. They're not just sitting there to be a cheerleader because nobody wants that. Nobody really wants that. You might think you want that for your ego. Like I want to ride with someone that's way better than me and I want to see that give you a, a whole bunch of different options that can fit into your budget or what you want to do. Or let's go practice. I'll go practice with you. You find someone that's way better than you, that has way more knowledge than you, and has more experience than you, and they're willing to teach, they're willing to help, they're willing to give back. So find yourself a really good mentor. So to me, this is the same thing as going to take a real class or a league, a coach. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing archery, very often there's, there's local leagues uh, where there's a coach involved who's, who's helping you learn. This is taking a course that is over a period of time. I think it's important, but I don't think it's critical. Uh, he thinks this is more critical than I do. And I agree that it is important, that it is valuable. But I think that in the modern era, you can keep learning as long as you are realistic about it. 
like I said earlier, if you don't video yourself and you're not realistic about how your performance is improving or not improving, it doesn't do any good. Having the mentor is kind of a self-check. It, it's a, you know, whack. You're not doing it. Um, it keeps you honest. Let's get toward the end of the video. Um, so he goes into don't be that guy. Basically, don't be the jackass. Don't don't be the guy riding around, squitting, driving like an idiot, um, you know, just causing problems, making stupid mistakes and not learning from them. Keep learning. Wear appropriate gear. Don't ride like an idiot. Keep improving, you know, so on and so forth. Build your skill level faster than you try to ride. Blah, blah, blah. And then the end of the video. So thank you, Greg Moto Jitsu, for the video, for my first Reacts video. Hopefully I can edit this down to something reasonable because we're at 39 minutes. Uh, I'm not posting this as a 39 minute Reacts video. Take care, have fun, stay safe, everybody, and keep the rubber side down.